Hello, friends. How are you today? I'm so glad you're here at Little Faith Builders Preschool. Are you ready to sing our good morning song? Let's sing it. It's a happy day, and I thank God for the weather. It's a happy day, and I'm living it for my Lord. It's a happy day, and things are going to get better. Living each day by the promises of God's word. Woohoo! Did you remember? I hope so. What a good song to sing. All right. Now remember, Little Faith Builders Preschool is a place where your spirit gets fed, your faith grows stronger, and you learn how to be an overcomer. All right, are you ready? So, what have we been learning about from God's Word, the Bible? Do you remember? We were learning about Noah and his huge ark, weren't we? Yes. And how God preserved them in his ark of love. While the whole world was covered by water, God kept God, Noah and his family and the animals safe in the ark. Well, today we are going to learn about another man who really lived, and his name was Abram. Now, after Noah and his family got off the ark, they had children and more ch and their children grew up and had children and their children grew up and had children their children grew up and had children and almost everybody forgot about again the true god the real god jehovah god that we worship god of the bible but god had promised not to destroy everything by with water again remember the rainbow promise yes okay so our lesson from God's word today is called God blesses faithful Abram. Do you know what faithful means? Faithful means you can depend on someone. If someone is faithful to always help you, that means they're always there right when you need them to help you. They're not there one day and then they say, oh, I think I'll be here tomorrow and then they don't come and, and then they don't come the next day and, and Faithful people always do what they say they're going to do. And if they say they're going to help you, they will be there to help you. And we need to be faithful people too. So let's learn about how Abram was faithful. I'm going to turn so you can see my felt board. All right. What's going on here? It looks very busy, doesn't it? There is a lot of people in this picture. Well, let's find out what they're doing. Abram lived in a city called Ur. Abram loved God, but many of his neighbors who lived in his city did not. They worshipped the moon god and made sacrifices to this god in the temples. So they thought the moon was God. God created the moon. The moon is not God. <sighs> I don't care if they do worship that old moon god that can't hear or see, Abram said. The only god I'm going to worship is the true god who loves me and takes care of me. One day, Abram's father, Tara, said, we're moving. I'm sure that won't make you unhappy, and I'm glad we can leave this wicked city and go to the place called Canaan. But when they traveled just halfway, Abram's father stopped. He said, we will live here for a while. Abram obeyed his father and stayed there until his father died. Then God talked to Abram. He said, leave your country behind you and your own people and go to a land I will show you. Abram didn't know where he was supposed to go. God hadn't told him, but Abram chose to obey. What a good decision that was, Abram. His wife, Sarah, may have said, Abram, are you sure God told you to leave? He at least ought to tell you where we are going and what town we are moving to. Anyway, we like living here. I don't need to know where I'm going, said Abram. I do know I trust God and I should obey him. He promised to bless me and I will become the father of a great nation. 
Then Abram said to Sarah, we must get ready to leave. Pack your things. We will take along my nephew Lot and all our sheep and cattle. Okay, so here's Abram, here's Sarah, his wife, and here's Lot, his nephew. And do you know what a nephew is? A nephew is your uh, brother or sister's son. That is your nephew. So what a hurry and scurry there was. Food and clothes were packed on donkeys and camels. Some of the people rode on animals. Some walked along with the cows and sheep, and there were lots of them. Remember back then there was no McDonald's or any restaurants or stores to stop in. You had to pack all your food and take it with you. Abram, Sarah, and Lot traveled many days and nights. It was hot and dusty, and they were often very tired. At last, they stopped near a place called Bethel. At different times, Abram built altars and worshiped God. So this is what he did at Bethel, too. Okay, so they moved to a place called Bethel. They took all of their servants and all of their things, sealed the bag, cows and donkeys and sheep, and they moved out. That's just what they're doing now. When they got to Bethel, I have to change my picture here because Bethel looked different than Ur, where Abraham used to live, or Canaan either. Okay. Oh, there's the, there's the earth when it was covered with water. Let's see what Bethel looks like. It's like Bethel had palm trees, where Canaan and Ur did not. So here's Lot, and here's Abram. All right, both Abram and Lot were very wealthy. They had sheep and, cap and cattle and many servants, but there were too many animals and not enough pasture. So fights broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. Okay, so they had so many animals, there, weren't enough, there wasn't enough grass for all of them. So the herdsmen, their servants that were taking care of their animals got into fights. There isn't enough land for your animals and mine, said Abram. We are godly men, and I don't want our neighbors who don't love God to see our people fighting. What would they think of us? But I have an idea. Look over to the east. Now look over to the west. Choose where you would like to live, and you can have that land. I'll take what is left. Abram was very kind to let his nephew Lot choose first. God had helped Abram not to be selfish. What did Lot, land did Lot choose? The land on the east side that was beautiful countryside with lots of water and green grass for his sheep. But he made a mistake. The land he chose was near a very wicked city. Abram had the land to the west that wasn't green and beautiful. But God had a happy surprise for Abram. Look as far as you can see in all directions, God said, 
All of this land will someday be yours. So Abram moved his tent near Hebron. And once again, he built an altar to worship God. Abram wanted to talk to God often so he would remember to do what is right. Abram learned to love his new land, and he never forgot to talk to God and worship him. Let's remember God blesses obedience. We shouldn't let the security and comfort of a present position or home make us miss God's plan for our life. Okay. So was that a true story? was a true story. It was from God's word, the Bible. Remember, every single thing in this word is true. It actually happened. Now, it happened a really long time ago, but it really happened. Okay, so let's talk about Job. <laughs> no, let's not talk about Job. Let's talk about Lot. Sorry. Let's talk about Lot, Abram's nephew. Abram's nephew, Lot, there, was two, there wasn't enough grass for all the animals, and the herdsmen were fighting. That was the people taking care of the animals. So, Abram said, you choose where you want Lot. What should Lot have said? Was his uncle Abram older than him? He should have respected his uncle and said, that's okay, Uncle Abram. You choose first. I'm honoring and respecting you. So you choose first. And, or at least he could have chose a land that was not as good but he chose the best land for himself. He said, well, if you're going to let me choose first, I'm going to choose the best land. So he did, but he made a mistake. What was that mistake? He moved close to a wicked city where all they were doing all day long was thinking wicked things and doing, doing wicked things, hurting people, killing people, stealing. <clears throat> and so... And that turned out to be a bad decision for Lot. But God blessed Abram. Now let's think about Noah. Okay. Well, how are Noah and Abram alike? They both obeyed God, right? God told them something. If God had told Noah, Noah, I'm sending a flood. I want you to make this really big, big ark. And it's going to take a really long time. What if he said... You know, God, I'm kind of busy. He didn't really feel like making the ark. What would have happened to him and his family if he didn't obey God? He would have died with all the rest of the people. Wouldn't have that been horrible? But because he obeyed God, he was blessed. God kept him safe. And it's also because everybody that's on the planet came from Noah and his family. Noah's like our great, 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 a lot of greats, grandpa. That's pretty amazing, huh? We are his descendants. So Noah obeyed God and he was blessed. Abram obeyed God. He moved out. He left his family, even though God didn't tell him where to go. He said, Abram, I want you to move. Well, where's that, God? God didn't tell him. Okay, did God tell me something? I want you to move. But I don't know where, but I know he told me to move. So pack up, Sarah. We're, we're moving. Now it took faith. He believed that God was going to take care of him. If he obeyed God, which he did, he moved, that God was going to obey him and take him where he needed to go. So Noah obeyed God and was blessed. Abram obeyed God and was blessed. What do you think we should do? Obey God. Obey God. But you say, well, God didn't, doesn't tell me things to do. He does tell you things to do. It is in his word, the Bible. Okay, and if you can't read yet, you can have somebody read it to you. And when you get older, you'll be able to read it for sure. There are things in the Bible that God tells us to do or not do. He tells us not to lie. He tells us not to steal. He tells us to be kind to others, even people that are unkind to us. There's lots of things in the Bible that he tells us to do or not do. But also, if you've received Jesus as your Savior, you have the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, living inside of you. He's living inside of you. and he sometimes will tell you things to do. If you get very still and you listen, you won't hear him like you hear me talk with these ears. It's, it'll be inside of your heart that you'll listen. Sometimes you'll hear God say, don't do that. Or do that. God told me to start a children's club one time, a children's Bible club. 
Yep, he did. And I did it. And I was blessed. Okay. So we're going to be obedient and faithful like Abram. All right. So let's pray. Close our eyes. Bow our head. Fold our hands like this or like this. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, please help us to be obedient like Noah and like Abram. Help us to follow what it is you want us to do, to follow what your word says to do. Help us to be faithful and always do what we say that we will do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's say our confessions. Remember our confessions? Why do we say them? Because it's important for us to say with our mouths what the Bible says about us. Okay. Get ready. Here we go. I am, now you say it, the righteousness of God in Christ. Good. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. Good looking. Very rich and a major blessing. I'm a doer, I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the word of God. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can be what God says that I can be. Good job. It's important to say that. You, you should say that every day, every week. That would be a good thing for you to say. Always confess God's word over yourself. All right. Now, we have been learning about letters. Do you remember what letter we learned about last week? If you didn't watch it, you can always go back and watch it. So let's start at the beginning. What's the first letter we learned about? Do you remember? Letter S. Letter S for snake and squirrel. What sound does letter S make? S. All right, get ready. What's the next one? What letter is this? T. What sound does T make? T. For toucan and turtle. T. T. Every letter has a sound. And some letters that are vowels. Remember we talked about the five vowels of the alphabet? And this letter is one of them. What letter is this? Oops. What letter is this? A. Letter A. It's the first letter in the alphabet. And it makes the A ah sound for apple and alligator. But because it's a vowel, it also says its name. In some words, it says the A sound. All right. Here's the other vowel we've learned about. What is it? I. Letter I. What sound does letter I make? I, I, I. Okay. For igloo and ink. And it also says its name, I, in some words. All right, what's this one? Letter P. P makes the p -p -p sound for penguin and pear and pumpkin. Okay, what's this one? Letter N. What sound does N make? N for necklace and nest. All right. I know it's a lot of letters, but you are doing fabulous. All right. What's this letter? C. Letter C makes the sound for cat and crab and other cut words. All right. So this week we're learning about a new letter. It is the letter... It looks like this. Do you know what letter this is? It is letter K. Letter K, uppercase K, lowercase K. They both say k for koala and king and key and kind. There's other things. But, but Mrs. Castor, I thought C said K. It does. You're right. C does say K. And so does K. So it's a little tricky. We are going to learn, well, when you get to first grade, you will learn more rules about when to use C and when to use K. But right now, we're going to learn how to draw letter K. G, are you ready? You have a pencil and a paper or a dry erase marker and a dry erase marker pen, something to write with, okay? We're going to start with 
uppercase K. Sometimes people call it capital K. Capital and uppercase are the same. All right, so we start at the top line and we draw a line all the way down like this. Easy peasy. Okay, uppercase K. And then we go start at the top and we draw a line down to the middle of the line, then down to the ground. There it is, uppercase K. What time does uppercase K mean? Yes, you remember. Okay, lowercase k is kind of the same, but a little bit different. Okay, you start the same. You make a long line like that. Then instead of starting at the top, you start in the middle. Okay, and if you have, if you have dotted lines on your paper like this, you would start at the dotted line for the middle part. Okay, you start down to the middle and then down to the ground. Okay, so uppercase K and lowercase K both say what? Right, and lowercase K has a smaller, it kind of looks like a sideways V. We haven't got to V yet, have you? <laughs> but this is uppercase K and lowercase K. Let's try it again, okay? Erase, or if you don't want to erase, if you don't have a dry erase board, you can just write it on your paper in a different spot, all right? How do we start in uppercase K? Start at the top, make a long line. Start at the top, go down to the middle, then out to the ground. Okay, uppercase K. Lowercase K, make a long line, but this time we start in the middle instead of at the top. And we make a line, go down to the middle and then down to the ground. They both say, all right, I would love to see your letter Ks. All right, now we're gonna practice our reading. I hope that you have not forgotten how to read. How do we read? What do we do first? Okay, I'm gonna make a short word. Let's practice reading it, okay? All right, so when we read, first we say the sound of the letters and then we stretch them out until we hear the word and we say the word. Are you ready? What letter is this? A says, ah. What letter is this? T says, t. All right, so let's say the sounds, ah, t. Now let's stretch them. Ah, t. Ah, t. Ah, t. Do you hear the sound? Do you hear the word? At. Right, the word at. My mom is at the store. Okay, so I'm gonna test you. What is this word? At. So once you know it, then you won't have to sound it out every time. You can just look at it and say, oh, I know that word, that's at. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm going to add a letter at the beginning. What letter is this? Right, it's S. And what sound does S make? So let's say the sounds of the letters first. S, a, t. S, a, t. All right, now let's stretch it. S, a, t. Do you hear the word? S, a, t. S, a, t. Yes. Uh, I sat on a chair. Sat. Okay, so what was this word? At, and what was this word? Sat, look at you reading, that is excellent. All right, I'm gonna, I am going to erase this S and I'm going to put a, what letter's that? P says, A says, a, T says T, P, A, T. Now let's stretch it. P, A, T, P, A, T, P, A, T. Do you hear the word? Pat. Yes. Pat the dog. Pat. All right. Now, did you forget? What word's this? At. What word's this? 
that. And what was this? At. Good job. Okay, one more at word. And all of those words that have the same ending, at, sat. <laughs> what word do we just do? Pat. Sorry, sat, pat, at. They all rhyme. They all have the at ending. Okay, so now what about this one? We learned this one last week. At. Cat, cat. Do you hear the word? Cat, cat. So cat. they all rhyme. They all have the at ending. Good job. All right. Now I'm going to try one with a new letter. Actually, we probably should just start with a short word. All right. What is this word? What's this letter? Letter I. As you can tell, it has a little dot. Letter I makes what sound? The I sound. What sound does T make? The T sound. So let's stretch it out. It. 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 Yes, I like it. It's the word it. Okay, now we're going to put our new letter. What is our new letter? Letter K. What sound does letter K make? K, K, I, T, K, I, T, K, I, T, K, I, T. What's the word? K, I, T, kit, like a first aid kit. It's a hit. Good. All right. Now I'm going to change. the back end. I'm going to erase that T and I'm going to put in a CK. Now, sometimes C and K are put together and they're always at the end of a word, not at the beginning of a word. Okay, so we have K, I, K. When we come to C and K, we don't say K, K even though they both say K and they're together. We just say one sound, K. All right, so let's try it again. K, I, K. K. I, k. Stretch it out. Kick. 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 What word is that? Kick. Yes. All right. I'm going to erase it and see if you remember our last word. What's this word? Just read that. Remember? K it. Kick. It and this one is kick, kick like karate kick. Kick. Okay, you have to kick with your leg though. I am so glad that you are learning to read. You're getting better and better every week. So remember, practice the letters that we've learned so far and write words. All words have to have vowels in them. Remember we talked about vowels are special because all words have them in them. And so make sure there's an A or an I in all the words that you write down and sound it out. Practice saying the sounds of the letters and stretching them out and listening for the word. Okay? All right. We are going to the letter K story. Watch a letter K story. Here it comes. Letter K. I will say the letter K. Now you say the letter. I will say the sound K. Now you say the sound. The letter is K. The sound is K. Can you say it? Which words start with the letter K? Let's read to find out. 
I see the kettle. I see the key. I see the kite. I see the koala. I see the kids. Okay, did you see all those K words? Every single one, sir, but come. So I want you to remember that I have attached papers. There's one that looks like this that says the letter K, kite, that you can practice your uppercase Ks. And also, so look in the description if you want your mom to print those so you can practice your letters. And this one is uppercase and lowercase k, k for kettle. This is a tea kettle, right? And remember, practice how you hold your pencil, okay? Let me get my pen so we can. So what do we do, remember? Stick it in, we hold it our finger and we put our other fingers behind or if you want to put two fingers down and the other fingers behind that works too okay if you can't do it on a regular pencil use a marker use some jumbo chalk just practice holding it that way if it's too small you say this is caster is so hard for me to write this small that's okay practice writing on the back Make it bigger and keep practicing. You can use a stick in the dirt. You can use finger in a tray of salt if it's okay with your mom. Um, you just keep practicing. And then the more you practice, the easier it will be to write small letters. Okay, now we're gonna watch our friend, Mr. Hartman, sing to us about the letter K. Get ready, get set, let's learn about the alphabet. 26 letters, that's it. Let's learn about the alphabet. Let's learn about the letter K. K is a letter. K is a letter. K is a letter. K is a letter in the alphabet. This is an uppercase K. Write it in the air like this. This is an uppercase K. Write it in the air like this. This is a lowercase K. Write it in the air like this. is a lowercase k. Write it in the air like this. Get ready, get set. Let's learn about the alphabet. Letter K is a consonant and it has a sound. Letter K is a consonant and it has a sound. I say the K sound k Now you say the K sound K. At the beginning of these words, listen for the K sound K. A little kitten, kitten, kitten. With her friend the koala, koala, koala. And her friend the kangaroo, kangaroo, kangaroo. Together flew their kites, kites, kites. At the end of these words, listen for the K sound. A big strong yak, yak, yak. Carries things on her back, back, back. 
like a heavy pack, pack, pack. Then she rests for a break, break, break. It's fun to learn about the alphabet, and I'm really gonna try and do my best. Learn each letter, learn each sound, learn how to write each letter down. I feel so good deep inside. I'm proud. I'm learning to read and write. Get ready, get set. Let's learn about the alphabet. Twenty-six letters. That's it. Let's learn about the alphabet. All right. So, what letter are we learning about? Letter K. All right. It's time for our craft. Actually, craft starts with letter C, but we are making today a a crown. Does crown start with K? Crown does start with K, but it doesn't start with K. It starts with letter C. But who wears a crown? Kings. Kings wear crowns, and king starts with K. K, K, K. So we're going to make a crown, and we're going to be kings today. Okay, but the Bible tells us who is the king of all kings. Do you know who that is? It is Jesus. Jesus is the king of all people, all the kings, no matter how they impor important they are, Jesus is more important. Do you know that song? Let's sing it. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus Jesus, 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 oh, he is the king. Can you make a crown? King. All right. So you should have this is the link to print. This is included in the description. You can print this. And if you don't have yellow paper, you can just use white paper and you can color it yellow or whatever color you want to color it. All right. And what do we always do? Now, I always cut. If I have more than one thing that I need to um, cut out from, I cut them apart because it's much easier to cut them out when they're not together. Okay, so do you have your scissors? I hope. All right, how do we cut? Put your thumb in the little hole, always in the little hole, put the rest of your fingers in the bigger hole. And when you cut, make sure your thumb is going up toward the ceiling, okay? And then we put our scissors on the black line and we open, shut them. Okay, now turn the paper. Is it, oh, it's hard if you have to turn it you full like this, but if you just turn the paper, it's much easier. Okay, turn that paper. So these strips are the part that you staple together that go on the back of the crown to make it big enough so you can wear it. Okay, this isn't the part that we're decorating. This is just the part that we staple or glue or tape or whatever you have. Did you see how I turned the paper there? Cut on the line. And remember, as always, if I'm going too fast for you, simply pause the video. All right, and so we cut on the line. It's a little bit tricky when it comes to these little round balls at the end. So you really have to turn your paper. Keep turning. Keep making your... And if you don't want a crown like this, you can like... Crowns are pretty easy to make. You can like draw a crown and then cut out the crown that you made. Now the crown that we're making today is yellow. Well, one thing that's fun to do... And it makes your crown look really beautiful. And that is if you cover it with aluminum foil. You know your mom has that. Some people call it tin foil in the kitchen. Sometimes you put it over dishes so they won't burn in the oven. Well, if you if you put some and it folds really easy, if you put it on your crown and you... And you cover your crown with aluminum foil, it makes it look like you have a silver crown. 
And that's really pretty. Okay. Almost done cutting here. Okay. Dun -dun -dun. This is our crown, so we can be kings. Okay. Did you know the Bible says we're going to rule and reign with Jesus? Wow, Jesus is the king. All right, so now for our craft, now we need some jewels. Now I have some jewels because you know Little Face Builders Preschool is really a preschool. So I have I have jewels that look like this or like this to glue on. Or I also have, you can also use like sequins if you have these kind of sequins. If you say, Mrs. Castro, I don't have either of those. You can just draw jewels on with markers and make them beautiful. Also, um, a fun way to do it is using glue and making glue glue jewels and then you put like marker ink in it put your marker ink in it um and let it dry you have to let it be real still and let it dry and then it'll dry and look like jewels also so all of those are options all right i'm going to put my computer down so you can see what i'm doing on my jewels okay so if you were if you were doing jewels or sequins, you probably need like liquid glue and not like glue stick. Glue stick is probably not. Mrs. Castor is a fan of glue stick because it's less messy, but some things need actual glue. Okay, so I'm gonna put some dots on my crown. And then I'm going to put some jewels. Here's the hearts. It's another jewel. Now, if your glue dot is bigger than your jewel, don't worry, because when it dries, you won't be able to see it. Okay. I think maybe I'll do a sequin. Here's a butterfly. And yeah, let's see. My sequin doesn't want to come out. Come on, guys. All right. Now, I'm going to let that dry so the jewels will dry on. And then when it's all dry, then you can staple or tape your strips to the end of it so that you can wear it on your head and be a king. And what letter does king start with? Letter K. And what sound does K make? You remember? That is fabulous. You're doing so wonderful. All right. Now. What do we always do at the end of our classes? We talk about receiving Jesus as our savior, okay? If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and you want to, then there's three things you need to do. One, the Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone has sinned. You've done something that you shouldn't have done. You thought a thought that was bad, or you did something, or you said something that was unkind, and maybe you hit your brother or sister. All those are sins. And there is nothing that we can do to get rid of our sin. It makes our hearts black, and there is nothing we can do to get rid of it. But the blood that Jesus shed for us when he died on the cross, that washes away our sin. So the first thing you have to do is admit that you have sinned. I have sinned before. I have sinned before. The Bible says everyone has sinned before. So you have to admit that you have sinned. In Acts 16.31, it says, 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So if you want to be saved, if you want Jesus to come into your heart and be your boss, and you want to become a child of God, some people say that everyone is a child of God, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that all people have been created by God, but the people that receive Jesus as their Savior, they are sons and daughters of God. I am a daughter of God because I have received Jesus as my Savior. I did that when I was a little girl. So don't say, well, I'm too little to do it. You are not too little. If you know that you've sinned and you're sorry that you've sinned, you're sorry that you did bad things, if you believe that Jesus is God's son, that he, that he was on the earth and he died on the cross for your sin, and then three days later he rose from the dead and he was alive, he stayed on earth, and then he, after 40 days he went back to heaven and he sits, he, he's in heaven today. And Romans 10, 9 and 10, so this is the last thing you need to do. If you confess with your mouth, confess just means say it, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Okay, so that just means you have to believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Okay, so if you want to receive Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to say something, then you say what I said afterwards. Okay, we're going to fold our hands, we're going to close our eyes and bow our head. Dear Heavenly Father, please forgive me for sinning. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again on the, on the third day. Please come into my heart and be my savior. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that and you meant it, that means you are now a son or daughter of God. You are part of his family. And when your body dies, it's outside, your spirit will go and live with Jesus in heaven, a beautiful, wonderful place forever and ever and ever. I'm going to be there. You say, Mrs. Castor, I watched your video. I would love to see you there. All right. So you let me know if that happened. Also, let me know if you need a Bible because I can send you one. All right. So don't forget to like and follow this video, subscribe, and I will see you next time. All right. Bye, friends.